thank you very much sir for talking to uh, money control um why are you bullish on india a are you bullish on india and b why well i think india is at a ta- point of take off uh, it has some natural benefits of a young population you know talent density in technology talent density in entrepreneurs uh, you know a very strong balance sheet so there are all the macro benefits but in addition i think uh, geopolitics is also in india's favor with uh, countries wanting to diversify the supply chain so manufacturing also becoming a strong thing in india and then i think there's this unique combination of digital public infrastructure which we have created over the last several years including aadhar upi ondc all these all these various platforms the it talent which came out of the it revolution you know, 5 million people working in technology and of course the fact that we have 100000 startups so when you bring the startups plus the dpi plus the technology talent density in the country that means there's going to be a huge amount of innovation in the coming years and that innovation will make many many parts of indian life better easier faster to to do so that's why i'm bullish right um in fact you know some of your recent presentations um uh, i saw which spoke about how you know you hear about software upgrades and hardware upgrades but you've spoken about how india is upgrading as a country um and we've seen this happen over the last 13 years beginning with aadhar um then you know things got built on top of that from ekyc to upi to fastag to ondc and you've I had a starring role to play in all of this. So what is the impact of this going to be combinatorial innovations as you call it? Well that's actually something that people should be studying. I know I I would like to encourage uh, researchers and uh, academics to actually study the impact of that. Because you know we are so busy doing it that <laughs> we are not studying it. Uh, but I think uh, you know it's many changes right you're going from informal to formal. You're going from cashless cash to cash. cash. you're going from many many micro markets to one mega market single market you're going from uh, uh, low productivity to high productivity earlier it would take you know a week to get a bank account now it do in 2 uh, minutes so many simultaneous things are happening all of which are coming together hmm. in fact uh, i think uh, prime minister modi said that you know this is going to be india's tech aid because of our data plus demographic dividend combined with uh, the technical or technology know how that we have yeah. um h- how do you see this story panning out for india in the medium to long term i think uh, all, all these things are going to come together i think mm. for example uh, data digital capital mm. you know uh, digital, when we say digital capital we, we're saying it's a new form of capital so mm. earlier we had land labor f- financial capital and so on but digital capital is your digital uh, footprint of your activities hmm. and if we can find a way for a person or a business to be empowered with their own digital capital they can get access to credit or you know many other things and the latest uh, data privacy bill which got passed this week shows has actually provides for the notion of consent managers and and so on. so actually it has now we have the legal infrastructure to make digital capital work at scale so that's going to basically create a massive explosion of credit both to buyers and to sellers for example if you look at upi today you now have a rupee on upi they already doing 50 crores a day or something so there's going to be a lot of consumer credit in a very uh, organized way coming to the buyers and with account aggregator and the digital capital of your sales activity of a business they're getting credit to the sellers so both the buyers and the sellers are getting access to credit so that will turbocharge the economy right since you spoke about dpdp um do you think it can be a game changer i mean it's sort of received mixed views some companies are happy unhappy about the digital data protection bill but broadly in spirit what, what do you make of it so i think uh, so ashna has done a great job in getting that bill together it's uh, it's very strong on it's a principle oriented bill so it's mm-hmm. it's, you know, it's it's not like they're trying to get, get every detail but broad framework and you know it it was you know long overdue so i'm glad that it's happened and now we have to build on that the regulations have to come out the data board has to come out so there are a number of things to happen and i'm particularly pleased that all the things required for data empowerment are there like the mm-hmm. consent manager and so on
Right. Um, so we've seen the impact of um, Aadhaar, Fastag, UPI. Now, you know, ONDC we will see over a period of time. What are the other game changing DPIs that you think is going to have a huge impact? Education is one, health is one. Right. Uh, you're also supporting, yeah. I think, AI for Bharat, you know, which is another There's initiative. DPI, which will allow data empowerment, mm -hmm. which will allow credit expansion and so on. Mm -hmm. And many other use cases of DEPA. There's going to be health with the work done by the NHA on the health stack, interoperable health records and so on. There's the education, Diksha, global national platform, and the underlying stuff which is on based on the Sunbird uh, software. There's the honest network which is to create an interoperable market for skills and uh, you know content and uh, you know jobs and so on. Then there's the whole language AI which is uh, Bashini, under which you have initiated like AI for Bharat, which and will I essentially yeah. make uh, language no longer a barrier for access. So anybody in their language can speak to the computer and get hmm. the work done. So that's going to ma massively in improve inclusion. Then there's general AI, you know, hmm. using large language models or whatever to build uh, solutions at scale for everybody to get access to knowledge, you know. So I think the, the many of Africa, there's the Beckon and uh, ONDC kind of, uh, uh, you know, creating a way to get millions of small players into the whole uh, system through a protocol. And I do believe there are many use cases like climate and so on where we have yet to see how it's going to be used. Right. Um, finally, sir, the long-term story for India, you know, is very bright, as you've been saying. In the in the short term, are, are you worried about, you know, the services industry, um, IT, because of macro factors in the U.S.? I think Moody's downgraded a few banks yesterday. Startups, we've had sort of a funding winter, which has stretched to summer, autumn, spring, and so on. What impact will this have? Because, you know, the IT services industry, startups, it's fueled a new generation of middle class. It's fueled consumption in a big way. Uh, but this year we've seen layoffs. So what impact do you think this will have or is this a temporary no, sort I, of I blip? Look, in in hmm. any economic cycle, there are hmm. going to be ups and downs. And recently, because of inflation, interest rates going up, hmm. you know, capital being not available as much as before, there are bound to be challenges. But the fundamental secular story is very positive. And I hmm. think uh, we are going to have a huge uh, rollout of uh, AI across the world that will kind of create a lot of opportunity. So I'm Fundamentally, I believe the secular trend is positive. Right. On that note, thank you very much for talking to thank us. You. Thank you, sir.